I'm Representative Barbara Marmoto, and I represent the 19th House District in the Hawaii House of Representatives. The uh, 19th District runs from 6th Avenue in Kaimakee and also encompasses uh, Diamond Head, part of Diamond Head, part of Kahala, Wailainui Valley, Wailainui Ridgeline, Kalani Valley, Ainakoa, and also uh, Wailaiki. So welcome today to the neighborhood. Kamuki comprises the major part of the district. And we have an organization here from Kamuki. And it's um, fairly old. It's called the Kamuki Business and Professional Association. And we have two folks here who are representing the organization today. The first is John Kobayashi, who is the past president and the uh, vice president at this time. And he is with VIP Investments. Uh, that's his regular day job. And also, we have Denise Motohiro, who is the secretary of the organization. And she works for the Hawaii Association of Realtors. She's the director of communications there. Uh, the president in today is Sharon Agata, and she was unable to be here with us. So, but thank you for coming. We're really happy to have you. You're welcome. You have to explain to me uh, what um, the Kamiki Business Professional Association does and how old is this organization? John, how old is, is it? Uh, we're 63 years old. It was started um, in the 1940s by a woman named Edith Takea who uh, was the chair chairman and president of Kaimiki, was it? Businessmen. It was uh, called the Kaimiki, Kaimiki Businessmen's Kaimiki. Association, but she's also the chairman of Kaimiki Dry Goods. Everybody knows Kaimiki Dry Goods. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's an old established uh, business on 10th Avenue. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she started it in the 40s. The 40s, right. Amazing. What does the Kamiki Business and Professional Association do, Denise? Well, um, currently we're, we look out for the best interests of the uh, businesses in the community. Um, we also focus and look at ways to bring more people into Kamiki because Kamiki has so many interesting features such as uh, great restaurants, unique uh, shops, boutique-like, and um, it just over, uh, Kaimiki just has this old time charm that I think a lot of people would enjoy if they come and visit. And it's comprised of the people who work there, is that correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Like storekeepers? Yeah. And storekeepers, retailers, restaurant owners, uh, businesses, insurance companies, uh, real estate companies, and so forth. Banks. Where, where does professional come in? It came in, it started out as Kaimiki Business Men's Association and it morphed into a more politically correct Kaimiki Business and Professional Association because it included a lot of medical doctors and lawyers and dentists that were part of the association. So we added professional to the KBP, KBA, which it was, it's now KBPA. Well, that's good. You're very diverse, and, and you do a lot for the community. I'm very impressed with this organization. Could you tell me what some of your past projects have been? Um, well, I think probably one of the earliest projects that uh, KPBA was involved with was the in the 1960s when the H-1 freeway was being built. And um, this freeway would allow motorists to bypass Kaimaki, so that was um, of major concern to a lot of the businesses in Kaimaki. Um, so what KPPA did is, you know, they got involved and were able to convince state officials to build an off-ramp to Kaimaki. Um, we've also been very supportive of a um, of the Kaimaki parking lot conversion from a meter to an attendance system um, several years ago. Uh, there was an issue as far as um, insufficient parking for a lot of the customers for the restaurants and businesses in the area. 
um, and these particular customers were competing with a lot of the employees who worked for these particular companies and businesses who would take up valuable parking sp uh, stalls by parking there all day. And um, once we were able to switch over to the attendant system, um, the cost of parking there would increase after several hours, so that kind of deterred some of the all-day parkers. Uh, and does, it does it work better, John? I mean, yeah. uh, what kind of cost increase are we talking about? It works better because uh, it prevents the, the old metered stalls that were six, six hour meters from being used by employees who would in turn go on their brakes and then pump it in some more and um, take all the parking stalls, the choice parking stalls. Um, so we work with the city and county with Toho Hamayasu who is uh, the DTA with DTA and also with uh, Mayor Hanneman. And, and we were able to, to uh, get the attendant parking, which, which the first two hours are regular fees, 75 cents an hour, like, That's like the old meter fees. After two hours, it doubles to $1.50. And what that does is discourages long-term employees from parking there. Mm -hmm. uh, employees in the past have had um, stalls rented for by their employers away from the site um, behind 3660 for instance at open lot uh, it was only sixty dollars a month there and actually if you park in our parking lot the metered parking lot for eight hours a day it costs you about a hundred twenty dollars a month to park there whereas if you park there your boss pays for it oh well, that's very ingenious so you got more parking availability uh, and um, I used to want to go there for lunch. I'd be discouraged because there wouldn't be any parking because yes. the employees would start like 8 o'clock in the morning and go past lunch. So thank you for um, pushing this through. And I believe uh, Councilman Ann Kobayashi also was helpful in this yes, endeavor. Yes, Ann was very helpful. She actually contributed to it and then added uh, $200,000 from the city council to help um, fund the parking lot and it, it helped because uh, now we we have people that actually find parking stalls to go to the restaurants to eat 